Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are making this adorable queen bee tray. I am working with the designer box from Diamonds and Dust from last month. I love this because it's not traditional yellow and black bee themed colors. It's this beautiful golds and blacks with that corally peach, not peach, but like a pinky peach color. It's hard to explain, but they're beautiful colors. I wanted to do something a little non-traditional from a tumbler, so I found this frame at Hobby Lobby and I decided to turn it into a tray. I have trays that I use as risers and trays all over my house, so I love them. So I just measured the inside of the frame and I wanted to cut this honeycomb pattern to fit inside there. I didn't want to do too many layers, so I didn't want to do a peekaboo, so I just did it this way. So we cut that honeycomb pattern out of this really soft gold vinyl. And then I trimmed around the edge of the cut vinyl just so it would be easier to lay in the frame without getting it stuck where I didn't want it to be stuck. I trimmed right up against the edge of the cut vinyl and I cut diagonally on each corner just to help be able to pull up that transfer tape. And then I positioned it in the frame just to make sure that I really did measure correctly and cut it exactly to size. And then what I did was I peeled the whole thing off the backing and then moved it over just a little bit. So just a little bit of the vinyl on the transfer sheet was sticking off so I could lay that down and then apply it just like we do the hinge method on a tumbler. While you are watching me apply this vinyl, I thought I would take a minute just to tell you a little bit more information about the designer box that I mentioned. So every month, Trina, the owner of Diamonds and Dust, she releases a new designer box on her website on Etsy. And it is two patterned vinyls and three coordinating glitters. And they are amazing, y'all. I have not once been disappointed in anything that I have gotten from her or never disappointed in any of the designer boxes. I love when they come in the mail because I swear it's just like Christmas, you know, like what's not to love about a glitter package, right? But really, I will leave a link in the description box of her Facebook group where she announces every month when they are available to go purchase on her website. And don't forget, I do have a code for 10% off of any purchase over $35 or more so you can get the designer box add a glitter or two more in there and use my discount. Okay, so back to the tray. So once I had that all placed down, I just applied that like the hinge method. And because it was pretty thin lines, I went really slow, just scraping a little to try to not wrinkle or get any bubbles. And then I kind of helped it along and pulled back the backing just a little bit and then would squeegee it down just very slowly because my known track record is to wrinkle it and get frustrated and have to start all over. So we were trying to avoid that. I scraped it to make sure it was nice and secure. And then I just used my tweezers to kind of peel up the transfer tape and removed all of that transfer tape very slowly. The easiest way is to kind of pull it back on itself. So lay it flat and pull it really slowly and then if I needed to just push down some of that vinyl, I would push that down or scrape it with the back of my tweezers and then just slowly pull it back on itself and it all came up beautifully. Thank you. 
So once that was applied, I mixed up a little bit of epoxy and I added this glitter, the hive that came in this designer box. And I just wanted a little bit because I didn't want to cover up this honeycomb pattern. So I just added a little bit, a few sprinkles to my epoxy just to give it a little hint of glitter, but not be full glitter coverage. I just added a little glitter at a time to make sure I didn't end up adding too much because I tend to have a heavy hand and sometimes we'll overdo it with the glitter. I mean, not that you could ever really have too much glitter, but you know what I mean. In this case, I didn't want it to be overly glittery. So I just poured that onto the tray and then I used my silicone makeup brush, I guess you could call it. Just get it at the dollar store and that helped me spread it out smoothly to cover the whole tray. This isn't a super thick layer of epoxy. I didn't want it to, in the end, there's a little bit of a lip in this frame. So I never wanted it to reach above the lip and get too heavy. So it's just a really thin layer and this brush really helped spread it out to get good even coverage. Because the brush is flat, it really makes it easy to push it up against the edges of the frame just to make sure that you're covering every corner of the frame. And then once I did that, I set the brush aside and I used my heat gun, my little torch, just to pop any bubbles that may be in this epoxy. Once I was done with that, I just set it aside to dry and cure overnight. I just made sure it was in a really flat spot so it didn't cure uneven. Then I found this adorable SVG also on Diamonds and Dust website. It says Queen Bee and it matched perfectly so I had to use it on this tray. And I just cut the offset in black and then the normal cut is from the same gold vinyl that I used for the honeycomb pattern. Sometimes I will put my vinyl layers together before I apply it, but this time I decided to apply the offset first and then the regular vinyl just to make sure that I could line it up perfectly. I also cut some of the inside honeycomb shapes from the two pattern vinyls that came in this designer box and I applied those just randomly. I just wanted a few little like accent pieces to match the whole theme of this tray. So you can hear, see here I just did a little cluster together. It was all cut together so that way you could see the pattern that was on there. And then of the other pattern, I just added some of those down at the bottom. And then I added one to the side so it didn't look like everything was floating, so it was cut off. I just always use that analogy from my scrapbooking days. You don't always want everything in the center to look like it's floating. It's okay to have things hanging off the edge because it gives it just a cohesive, flowing look. Then what I did next is I took some removable vinyl and the same shape as these little patterned honeycombs I cut out of the removable vinyl and I just placed the removable vinyl spots in random places so that I could add glitter. I could have just used tape and taped it off but I figured this was the best way so I could line it up and then just remove the whole thing. I just made sure that each honeycomb stencil had a wide edge so that when I applied the glitter glue, it didn't bleed over into the pattern that I didn't want glitter on. So I just applied a few of those here and there. 
you can see here I put this one down and then I end up moving it so that it kind of goes overlapped into the queen bee design but then I just taped off where the vinyl for the queen bee was so that it didn't get glitter on that. Then I'm going to take the other two glitters that came in this designer box, Oh Honey and Nectar, and apply them randomly to the spots that we have open here. I love Nectar. It is the most beautiful colored glitter. It's hard to explain in person what it really looks like. It's like a coppery rose gold, but kind of has that coral hint to it too. It's just so pretty. So anyways, I used my Crystal Lac Glitter Glue and just applied it to the stencils and then applied the glitter. And I was trying to figure out how to dump the glitter without it really falling down the whole tray. So I just put a piece of printer paper over it and tried to flip it over as fast as I could. And that seemed to work. And then in the end, what I did was just took a dry, soft paintbrush and brushed away any glitter that might have gotten on any other part of this tray. And then after each stencil had the glitter applied, I immediately removed it because I didn't want the glitter glue drying to the stencil and peeling up any part that I didn't want peeled up. Once I had all that glitter removed and the spots were dry, I sealed them and let that dry again, just so the glitter would not go anywhere when we applied the last coat of epoxy. So then we're going to move into the legs of this tray. I got these, I think they're candlesticks, but they come in an unfinished wood pack and I think you get five or six in a pack. And I just spray painted them gold to match the vinyl that we used in the honeycomb pattern and I couldn't find any of my E6000 glue so I just used hot glue because hot glue is amazing anyways. So I just glued a candlestick to each corner and that will make up the legs of this tray. So after I applied the legs I just mixed up another batch of epoxy a little bit more than the last round because we want to cover all the vinyl and the glitter and I just mixed that up and then applied it to the tray and I used the silicone makeup brush thing again to help me smooth out into all the corners and get a good coverage. forgot to show you earlier but when I cut the queen bee out I am missing the very inner center of the gold part of the edge so I found these bee charms that I had forever and so I knew it instantly had to be part of this tray and so I just applied that last coat of epoxy and then added it right in there so that it would seal itself in there and then I set it aside to dry and cure again and then it was all done and y'all this tray turned out beautiful. It's so pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. It is available on my website if anybody does want it, but other than that, I just have it sitting on my shelf right now so that I can look at it when I'm working and just enjoy its beauty.
I hope you all like this bonus video and I inspired you in some way and I hope you will come back on Saturday to continue our dad inspired series where every Saturday in June I am releasing a dad inspired tutorial. So thank you for joining me and I will see you back on Saturday. Bye y'all.